Manga Wido. My name is Masa. I know I don't look like much, but I run a fairly high-class sushi store. There were a couple of regulars that showed up today, and I was showing off my sushi skills to them. Here you are! Thanks for always coming by! I'm glad you two are still getting along. Here, this is a little bonus. Yay! You're like, not a sushi chef in a good way. You're friendly and easy in a good way. Hey, that's rude! It's okay. <laughs> Maybe it's because of my history. Oh, why did you want to become a sushi chef? Ah, you're gonna ask me about my old times, huh? <clears throat> well, one day, it was right around when I was in middle school. I was in the middle of my rebellious age and would often skip class, show up late, and tie my hair. I would often go against the correctional teachers. Eventually, the police caught me with a stolen bicycle next to the river. I was a little dumb as a kid. Man, manju night is the best! I would often walk around aimlessly at night and eat manju. Hey, manju boy! It was also an everyday occurrence for police to detain me. Again? Come on, Tomo. The police officer, Tomonori Yokoyama, aka Tomo, he was the first one to notice me and keep an eye on me. Looking back now, he was doing his best to make sure I didn't stray too far off. Ugh, you gotta make me come all the way out here again, huh? Oh, come on. That's what it means to be young! Uh, you don't have any dreams or anything? Huh? Dreams? At the time, I didn't even think about dreams. I graduated middle school and high school, and since I didn't like studying, I didn't go to college. I just figured I'd find some random job, make decent money, and grow old. At least I can enjoy the now. I want to become famous and date a cute model! You... You should think about the future, bud. Here. I'm gonna take you home now. Hey, can I ride on your bicycle with you? You idiot. I kept not thinking about anything and went to some random high school and graduated middle school. Then I went to a sushi store for my middle school graduation and met someone that changed my life. What is this? I've never had sushi like this. The boss was moving through the process of making a sushi like it was nothing. It was simple, but it tasted better than any other sushi I had tasted in my life. Now that I think back, why wouldn't it taste better than supermarket sushi? But to me at the time, it was a revelation. I raised my hand and announced to everyone, Sir, I want to be like you. I will be like you. Please teach me. What are you talking about? Of course, the chef and my dad were both at a loss with my sudden action, but I was determined. After I graduated high school, I kept begging the chef to let me work under him. Please, I don't care what kind of training you want to put me through. Just make me a sushi chef. At least you have some courage. He eventually gave in to my determination and I became his student. But this is where it started getting tough. Hey, Masa, what is that hair? I dyed it black. Your hair is too long. What are you gonna do if the hair gets into the sushi? Go get a haircut! What do you think the rice is? Don't make them little mud balls! Stop wasting my food! Sorry, sir. I don't care if you collapse. You keep making them until you remember! Yes, sir. I'm so scared. <laughs> and I practiced and studied under his direction for 10 years. I was able to start my own store. Wow, that's incredible. You actually have a fairly incredible past, don't you? Hey there. I have huge respect. Right? I was proud that what I did was respect worthy. I was happy, so I kept on going about my past. The boyfriend pointed at a corner in the store. Oh, what is that, Mr. Masa? <laughs> oh, the security camera. One of my friends said that this area is getting a little dangerous, so he recommended that I install one. Wow, look at you. You're making bank. I'm not going to make you any more freebies. Don't keep kissing my ass. Just as I was enjoying my regulars, the entrance to the store opened. It was two young people, both dressed spectacularly. And just by looking, you could tell they were rowdy. If there were any of the other stores around here, they probably would turn them down immediately. But I have never turned down any customer in the 15 years of my store history because I wanted every person to taste sushi. 
Another regular showed up behind the couple and tried to sit down, but maybe he was afraid of the couple. He moved to a different seat. What up, man? You scared of me? <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, they're exactly as I expected. What do you want to eat? I got money now, so I can pay for whatever order you want. Really? I want the salmon. The PDA? Seriously? Hey, old man! Salmon! We don't carry salmon. What the hell? What a racket store! I made the sushi immediately after he ordered, but this is where the problem started. Hey, what is this? It's this expensive for just one? Yes, sir. Give me a break! The Kaiten sushi is cheaper and better! What a scram. I know we don't look like much, but we market ourselves as a high-class restaurant. We will ask for a price according to the chef's skill. The regular couple's boyfriend was about to say something to them, but I told him it was fine and calmed things down. I was just giving them what they ordered and ignoring the rest, but... Hey! There's hair in my rice! Ew! There were a few strands of hair oddly placed on the sushi. There was no way that my hair would go into the sushi like this. I went to the Spartan training and lost most of my hair. I've been hearing about the Kaiten sushi places that keep getting complaints that there's hair in their food and then asking to get free food. Maybe this guy is. That was enough for me to lose my shit. Hey, old man! What are you gonna do about this? There is no way that this sushi would have hair in it. Oh, you wanna come at me, a valuable customer? I could squash your store with the internet now. Do what you like. Ah, you think I'm bluffing? I'm with the gang that handles these parts. I could squash your restaurant in a heartbeat. Please, by all means. I wish he'd gone home after me clearly not buying his arguments. But of course, the so-called Yakuza wouldn't calm down. Just make it all free, or else I'm gonna call my friends. You want that? <sighs> this is such a waste of time. I didn't want to make it a big deal, but what else was I gonna do? Please, calm down. It's gonna start causing you problems. What are you talking about? You're the one that needs to back down. Maybe he wanted to act all tough in front of his girl. He didn't listen to my warning. I had to do it to him. By the way, what gang are you a part of? What? The Manwa Group! Everyone knows about the Manwa Group here. They were a mid-sized organized crime gang and the police were extremely vigilant against them. I see. You sure? I told you! Okay, can't take it back. What? Why don't you just go ahead and tell that gentleman over there all about your gang stories? You got this, right Tomo? The regular that came in behind the couple just grinned and nodded his head. He tapped on his shoulder and showed the man his badge while grinning. It was Tomo, the one that helped me during my middle school days. You're being a little too loud. Can you come with me to the station? What? A detective? His face slowly lost all color. By the way, you put the hair in yourself, right? What? What kind of proof do you have of that? I was watching. That's not proof! Oh, that camera recorded all of it. Sorry, I just recommended he install the security cameras. He made a last ditch effort after listening to a smiling Tomo to run away without his girl. What? Hey, don't leave me! Shit it! I don't care about you! Aw, he dumped you. I stood near the entrance as he tried to leave. Tomo detained him very quickly. D -d Damn it! The man and woman were taken away by the police that showed up. I heard later that he had nothing to do with any gang. He was just a regular delinquent. And they actually had somewhere to work. They wanted to eat as a celebration and ended up in my store. However, the whole event was uploaded to the internet and they lost their jobs. They will probably have a pretty difficult time finding new jobs too. They also said they were Monwad gang, so I'd be terrified if I were them. I guess that's what happens when you just rely on your senses as a kid. Exactly. You were able to become a decent human being because you had my excellent correctional skills. You should be thanking me. Yeah, yeah. 
Thanks, I guess. <laughs> yeah, okay. He punched me on the shoulder, and I made him the best sushi I could. Let's stay friends, Tomo. My name is Batoki Kinoshita. When I was two, my father passed away, and my mother has raised me all on her own. At first, she was a housewife, so she was very scared. But both my grandparents helped out and lent some money so we didn't struggle too much. However, I apparently had an extremely fast metabolism, and no matter how much I ate, I was always skinny. My grandfather's clothes were also always a little retro, and people would always make fun of me for being poor. Oh my gosh, you really are skinny. You're like a sewing needle. Your clothes are lame too. He probably has no money because he has no dad. What a pitiful loser. During elementary school, people would still get mad at the kids, so it wasn't that big a deal. But in middle school, things got worse. A certain woman had her eyes on me. Um, Miss Yamaoka, you dropped this. The girl walking in front of me had dropped her handkerchief. I picked it up to return it when one of the girls realized and said that I had her handkerchief. What? Why do you have my handkerchief? You just dropped it, so I picked it up. He must have stolen it from your pockets. Your family is poor, right? You probably tried to steal it to sell it. What? No, I would never. After this, all of the girls would start to bully me. They would call me names like poor and nerd. That was just the beginning. When I sweat during the summer, they would keep saying things like, you stink and don't come near me. Is it just me or does this classroom stink? Chew, what is that smell? I smell poor. Who do you think it's coming from? It has to be Kinoshita. I don't know about his money situation, but at least take a shower. <laughs> Seriously, it's gross. Dirty and smelly. Literally the worst. Uh, but I shower every day. Ew, the nerd is saying something. You should change your name to Grossness instead of Kinoshita. <laughs> That's hilarious and perfect. They yelled and taunted me. I was about to cry. They were very popular and going against them meant that they would be bullied too. Just like me. The classmates started avoiding me and I slowly became more and more isolated. Motoki, what's wrong? You seem down lately. Oh, nothing. I'm just tired from studying is all. Don't work too hard. If there's something you want to talk about, I'm always going to listen. I didn't want to worry my mom, so taking off school was never an option. Every day was hell. I would avoid Marion as much as possible and ran to the library on breaks. After class, I would leave the school as soon as possible. I was avoiding them. Then, they started pushing me to do things for them and I just kept saying okay. I guess that worked. They were bored that I didn't react and they went to the next person to annoy. They left me alone. I thought it was great and before I knew it, I was taking my entrance exams for high school. Mom! I'm gonna go to a great high school so I can make you proud! I went to a high school that I could go to by bike and look for the best public high school around. I studied hard. My mom would cook me food for nights and buy me textbooks. Maybe it's because I studied in the libraries to avoid Marine? I got an A plus on my preliminaries! The day of the exam, I took my mother's homemade charm and I was able to take it to my fullest. And then, YES! I was able to go to the school I wanted to! I'm so glad Maureen isn't around. No one bothered me at all during high school and I was able to focus on studying. Afterwards, I used scholarships to go to college as well. I wasn't too good with women because of my experience in middle school, but I made a lot of friends in clubs and enjoyed my life in college. Just as I was about to thank Maureen for bullying me into studying hard, it was right around the time I was looking for a place to stay around my work after I had graduated college. Hmm? Kinoshita? What? I saw a smirking Marine standing there watching me. It was in the past, but I felt a cold sweat running. What? You need something? Nope. You just look as poor as you used to, so I said hey. If you don't have anything to say, I... What are you doing now? Day-to-day -day jobs or something? <laughs> I graduated college and found employment. Leave me alone. I'm busy unlike you. Go away. I pushed her out of the way and walked away at a brisk pace. She yelled at me from behind saying, you have some attitude, geek. I just had to ignore her. Honestly, my heart was beating out of my chest and I was sweating a waterfall, but 
I felt good because I was able to say something back to the person I can never talk back to in school. I'm not the loser I was back then. I kept encountering things after that at work that made me want to quit, but I was able to keep pushing forward after remembering I was no longer that bullied man. I defeated the past to become a stronger me now. A few years passed after that. I had forgotten about Martine and middle school. I had to go back to work for some problems when I ran back into Martine. What? Look at you, loser. You look so po- Huh? She was about to make fun of me, but then she froze after seeing where I just came from. You live here? Yeah, I live on the 25th floor. You're kidding. This is such an expensive apartment. Dad said this was the most expensive in the area. Are you serious? Martin screamed and started going crazy. You're rich now? I work as a CFO for a company that my friends started. That's crazy. Why didn't you tell me sooner? You're incredible. Why would I have to tell you? Hey, I'm single. I can date you. What? What are you talking about? You know how I said all those things when we were kids? It was because I liked you. You know how they say you want to tease the guy you like, right? You are totally gold digging right now. Not at all. I just wanted to live in a tower mansion is all. If you don't want to date me, let's at least be friends. I couldn't walk straight after she clung onto my arm, so I called a taxi and got in to get away. I heard her screaming from behind, hang on, let's be friends. I'm actually beyond angry. I pity how obvious she's trying to dig for money. She didn't know any of my contact info and I didn't say what company I work for. So I'm sure she won't bother me anymore. Or so I thought. Hey, I was waiting for you. Let's trade lines. She started waiting in front of my home for me to come home. Apparently Maureen works, but she spent all of her money on men and is poor with no savings. She kept showing up near my apartments and waited for me to show up. Come on, I'm gonna be chased out of my apartment because I can't pay rent. Please let me live here. Never! Don't come again or I'm gonna call the police. Don't be like that. If I can't live here, at least let me some money. You're the CFO, right? You should have a lot of money. Come on, listen! I got tired of calling a taxi every time to get away, so I started staying in my office. It was already fairly busy, so I had no problem staying in the company bed. I spent about two weeks doing this, and she didn't dare show up at my company, so I was comfortable. However, I had to go home because I needed to pick something up. What's going on? Apparently, some lady shoved some tenant, and the police showed up. Some lady? No way. It was Marion, all right. I heard from the apartment manager later on, but she was waiting for me again. She was upset because she hadn't seen me in a while. And then someone showed up who kind of looked like me. She thought it was me and was mad, so she shoved him saying, Don't you dare ignore me, you geek! Man was surprised by this and called the police. She was taken away. I was at a loss for words for how stupid she was. I was sure after this happened, she wouldn't show up again. I felt a little better. I apologized to the man who she mistook as me just in case, but then he just said, wow, you've been through it, huh? And said that he would handle everything as far as compensation and damages. It was all over. I felt great, but Maureen was not that simple. She found where I worked and showed up. The company website has my face and name, so I'm sure that's where she found me. It's your fault I was arrested. My mom and dad settled it, but they're furious. I was told to not meet up with Ray anymore either. Fix this. How the hell is that my problem? Raya must be one of the men she plays with. I didn't have the time to deal with her, so I just called the police to have her taken away. Afterwards, from what I've heard, she was shut off from her parents and fired from her job because she was involved in police incidents twice. She couldn't pay rent and was chased out. She had to pay for damages and reparation from the first case, so she started to work nights in the city. All the money disappeared as soon as she paid everything off, so she couldn't go play with all her boy toys and had gotten old really fast. My classmate showed me a picture of her on social media and said, who do you think this old lady is? I was truly surprised. marie has been asking all her old friends that she needs money and if she can live with them, so she's being blocked by everyone. <laughs> Suits her. I'm gonna work hard so I don't become like her. I hope I never see her again. You're just a subcontractor. Get out of the elevator. You don't deserve to use it. 
My name is Soma Seta. This is Amori. He's an employee of a client company. I first met him a year ago. Our hometown was hit by a natural disaster, causing a major decrease in the number of tourists. After I graduated high school, I started working in a glassmaking factory. It had been my dream ever since a school trip in middle school when I picked glass blowing as one of my activities. I couldn't picture myself doing anything else in the future. I live and work at the factory I trained at. It's been three years, and my mentor appointed me to be in charge of some of the products. I am confident in my work. My cups and accessory cases are popular among the customers. Factory owner says, I want you to be in charge of our factory one day. It's a rewarding job. I am 100% sure this is the right path for me. However, a large typhoon caused a lot of destruction in our hometown. The whole area was destroyed. Tourists were a big part of our customer population. Since the typhoon hit, hotels have shut down and most of the area has become off limits due to the risk of landslides. The number of tourists visiting the area went down by two thirds and so did our earnings. We need to do something about this situation. I agree. Oh, I remember seeing something on the news the other day. I told the factory owner about an advertising agency. It was a major company that was well known. Even I knew about it before I found out about its recent project. This place has recently started a new project to spread Japanese traditional crafts overseas. I see. That sounds pretty interesting. They connect small factories like ours with retail stores all over the world. That way we can get customers overseas to see our products. We might be able to fix the problem if we contact them. To tell you the truth, I've heard rumors about this advertising agency. Huh? What kind of rumors? The factory owner told me how it was a large company and was well known, but not for the best reasons. I looked them up myself and I saw a rather large number of negative comments online. They were all comments about how Wide Inc. went about their business in a shady way. I got scared reading the comments since a lot of them claimed it was an exploitative company. Many of the employees quit because there were cases of abuse of authority. I apologize. I didn't know they had such a bad reputation. It's okay. We're in a desperate need of help though. I don't think our factory will make it if nothing changes. Okay, we should give it a chance, but I'll make sure to bring my backup just in case white ink is as bad as it sounds. The factory owner was acquainted with the executive members of the traditional crafts association. He asked some of them to help him out through the process. After showing white ink our products, they told us that they loved them. The deal was closed. As it turns out, everything we were worried about only affected the employees there. None of the issues seem to affect the business we would be doing with them. Our sales have increased, and we're getting more orders, sir. I'm glad we made this decision. Me too. They want us to consider making a line of work that would fit customer tastes from overseas. That is amazing. I can't believe people all over the world will be using the products we make. I'm so excited. And I've been thinking, since you're one of the younger ones, it might be better for you to handle business with White Ink. Huh? Me? Yeah. Many of the White Ink employees are young, so I thought it'd be better if you go. You probably have more in common with them. I don't even understand how smartphones and computers work. I'm afraid I might let you down. I trust you. You're not only a great craftsman, but you're a wonderful person. You'll do great. Uh, okay. I'll do my best. I promise I won't let you down. And so it was decided I would be handling all issues concerning White Ink. I had to visit White Ink frequently, mainly for meetings and deliveries. Things were hectic, but I was enjoying every moment of it. But only until I met this pain in the ass, Omori. I will be in charge of handling your company from now on. Sh sure, it's nice to meet you. Hey, so you're close. You need to do something about them. Huh? My company basically represents the country. We're professionals. You can't walk around the company looking so shabby. It will ruin our reputation. Oh, I apologize. I've never been into fashion. Can you tell me exactly what I should fix? You shouldn't come in here in just any suit, you know. That's a cheap generic product. It's not good enough to be brought into the company premises. I'm sorry. Seriously, this is why I hate subcontractors. I was taken aback by the sudden attack. I didn't know what to say. 
Omori was overly confident about himself and his company. He would call me subcontractor trash. It was obvious he looked down on me. He would treat other factory employees the same way. I feel sick every time I have to see his face. I was glad it wasn't just me. <sighs> I enjoy everything else, but I just can't take Omori. I don't want to see him anymore. I was relieved to see Omori wasn't in when I went to drop off some deliveries. A nice female employee handled the deliveries for me. I was about to leave the company peacefully when, unfortunately, Omori appeared. Yo, man! How dare you smile at her! She's one of our pretty employees. You have no right to even look at her! I was just dropping off some deliveries. I'm finished, so I'll get going. You think I don't notice how red you are? You're blushing! I know how lonely it can be, living in a place where there are no cute girls, but don't think you can hit on her. You're not good enough for her. Not good enough? I hated the way he was laughing. I wanted to punch him in the face. But I didn't want to cause any trouble for the factory owner after we worked so hard to get here. We've only started getting back on track. We can't do anything to risk failure. Plus, the work was fulfilling and rewarding. Everything was perfect except for Omori's existence. I didn't want to lose this job. I held back my anger. I'll be leaving now. That was the best I could do. Damn it! I hate his guts! And Omori... I want to make him pay for everything he does. Don't be so affected by him. He's just a piece of trash that needs to stomp on others to feel good about himself. He'll get a taste of his own medicine someday. I really hope so. And I hope I get to witness it. I want to see him cry. I was venting to my coworkers, but little did I know that two weeks later, I was in Whiting's cafeteria that day. Subcontractors are allowed to use the company cafeteria. It was a little past lunchtime and it wasn't that crowded. I figured it wouldn't be a problem, so I went inside to get some lunch. Wow, this is good. Cafeteria food here is delicious. It's like from a restaurant. I was enjoying my Hamburg steak, which tasted amazing, just FYI. I ran into the one person I didn't want to. What the heck are you doing here? Oh, Mr. Omori, nice to see you here. I almost choked on the meat I was chewing. Omori was standing behind me with a coffee in one hand. You're just a subcontractor. Why are you eating in our company cafeteria? Well, uh, it says on the sign that we're allowed to eat here. That sign is for people that are as good as or a higher class than us. It's not written for little pieces of trash, but everyone here, they don't seem to care I'm here. You only have the brains to make worthless things out of glass. You being here ruins the whole atmosphere. You should know your place. Now get out of here immediately. Omori tried to take the cafeteria tray, so I did my best to protect my food. Hey, cut it out. I'm still in the middle of eating. I'll leave once I finish the meal. So please stop bugging me. What? You're talking back to me? I can't believe this. You don't have time to eat. You need to get back to work and make new products to bring to me. This is why I hate you, worthless idiots! Omori suddenly stopped talking, and I noticed he was staring at something. I turned around to see what it was. Oh, uh, Mr. Chairman, it's good to see you! The chairman of the Traditional Crafts Association was standing right behind me. He is the one who helped us get the contract with White Ink. He's an amazing craftsman, and has won major awards which made him famous. White Ink wouldn't even have considered working with us if it wasn't for this man. I stood up and bowed deeply to greet him, but he... Hey, relax. You don't have to do that. Patted my shoulder as he greeted me. His big, warm hand on my shoulder was reassuring and calmed me down a little. After he gave me a comforting smile, he turned to Omori and glared at him with piercing eyes. I heard what you were saying to this man earlier on. If I'm not wrong, it seems to me that you look down on us factory men. Um, well... I mean, I guess so. They won't be able to survive without us. They're just weaklings. I need to teach them their place so they don't start thinking we're equals. I see. My factory isn't that different in size. So I guess that makes me a weakling too, huh? Have you been looking down on me the whole time? Am I just a worthless subcontractor to you? What? No, sir. 
I don't think that way of you. It's true what you said. We all have our businesses thanks to your company connecting us to the world. However, it's also true that your company survives because the subcontractors help you create the products you wish to sell to the world. Do you think I'm wrong? Um, no. You're absolutely right. The chairman began to state the truth matter-of-factly. He had a calm tone, but you could see he was furious by the look in his eyes. Omori probably sensed the anger and irritation as well. He stood there like a deer in headlights, his whole body paralyzed. I always thought your company and us factory owners were in a win-win business relationship. I never thought either one of us was better than the other. We're all equals. Am I correct? I completely agree with you. Omori couldn't think of anything smart to say, so he just looked down and mumbled a reply. You know, there are many companies out there that do what you do. You guys aren't our only choice. Do you realize that? Huh? Uh, Mr. Chairman. We deserve proper respect. I'm sure you don't like being treated this way. That's true. I never look forward to coming here. He always has a list of insults ready for me. What? Wait, what are you saying? I'm saying you need to fix your attitude towards us. If not, we will find another company to work instead of you. Since I am the chairman, my opinion represents the whole association's voice. If you know what I mean. But! All the color from Omori's face drained away, and he stood there flustered. He finally realized how much trouble he would get in if all of us pulled out working with white ink. Just then, Omori's boss, who had heard of the commotion, came rushing in. He pushed Omori's head down, and as he said, I apologize for all the trouble this idiot has caused. Omori! Apologize now! I... I'm so sorry for everything! I hate to say, it felt awesome. Later on... So what happened to that guy? Omori, was it? I went in for deliveries, but he had disappeared. Seriously? I wonder if he got fired. I heard from one of the other employees, but apparently he was sent to a subsidiary company far away. I heard it's a small place, and the people there are crazy. White Eek wanted to exile him, I guess. <laughs> well, he deserves it. I looked up the company and has a horrible reputation. Low pay, a lot of overtime work, forced work on the weekends. I wouldn't want to work there. Omori isn't going to survive long in such a place. He'll probably run away within a month. After that, one of the employees at White Eek kept me updated on Omori's whereabouts. He couldn't handle his new company. And he really did quit within a month. He got into such a major company. What a waste. That's what he gets for looking down on us. I made a vow to myself never to treat anybody the way Omori treated me. Now, I gotta work harder to get ready for when I have to take over the factory. I plan on giving it my all. I hope customers overseas see how valuable our products can be. My name is Kosuke. After graduating high school, I started working part-time at a nearby convenience store and now I work as a formal employee. I'm home. I just finished my night shift and I'm exhausted. I got back home right before sunrise. I've done this for 10 years now. I was thinking about something that happened. When I was 15, my mother was basically bedridden at home, so we were living off my mother's social security and my father's income. My mother had a difficult to treat disease and it was fairly expensive to treat every month. On top of that, my father wasn't working a high-income job. That's why the house was always under pressure. But as long as we were happy, then I didn't care. Then one day, Mom, just sit down. Thanks. I'll help a little, though. Sis, how about you help out instead of just watching TV? I talked to Reiko, my sister, on the couch watching TV. She just ignored me and looked away. Are girls this age all like this? And then my father came home. He usually is cheerful and announces his return, but today, he had a serious look on his face and looked at us and said, I have something to talk to you all about. He gathered all of us in the living room. I have cancer. They say I have three years to live. But, but... Cancer? Remaining life? I was shocked and lost track of what to say. I'm so sorry, but just because I'm sick doesn't mean that I won't help this family out while I'm alive. I will work until this disease won't let me to support us. 
What are you talking about, Dad? You don't have to work. You don't have to work, so just focus on getting better. How about <laughs> you work, Kosuke? Reiko, Kosuke doesn't need to work. You two need to focus on your studies. But... Thank you. My father smiled at me and gave me a pat on the head with his warm hands. Just like he said, he continued to work until he couldn't move anymore. Three years later... Here, Dad. I peeled some apples for you. My father couldn't move anymore and stayed in a local hospital to focus on treatment. He lost all of his hair from chemo and it hurt to see how much weight he had lost. Kosuke, I'm sorry for causing you so much trouble. You don't have to apologize, Dad. It's not anyone's fault. Here, have an apple. As I fed him an apple, he slowly brought his upper body up. Kosuke, I want you to achieve your happiness. You do whatever it takes to get there. You understand? Dad, you're so kind. You deserve to be happy. After he said that, my father was no longer able to get up. A few days later, he passed away. Happy, huh? I don't know if what I'm doing is what my dad wanted from me or not. Dad. I heard my mom's voice as I was remembering my father's last words. Mom, you okay? I left you alone because you were asleep. I'm okay. <laughs> Welcome home. Great job today. How do you feel? Any different? Yeah, no difference. You don't worry about me, though. You rest well, okay? Her cough went away, so I listened and decided to go back to my room and rest. Hey, bro, I have something to tell you. It was rare for her to come talk to me on her own. Uh, yeah, what's up? I'm actually gonna get married. What? That's sudden, but congratulations! Who's the lucky guy? He's super rich and works at some big company. I met him at a matchmaking party the other day, and he's a great guy. Really? Great! I'm glad to hear that. I wasn't sure who it was, but I know that she was unhappy with how we lived. I'm sure she would be happy if she was married to a rich man. At least she could be happy. Or at least, that's what I thought when... So, can I have about $10,000 for the wedding? $10,000?! There's a lot of things I need to do to get ready for the wedding, so... Of course she wanted to talk about money. We don't have that kind of money! I know there's still money from Dad's insurance. My father did leave about $100,000 in his insurance. Most of it was towards Mom's treatment and Reiko's tuition and other needs. I want clothes. I want games. I want to go on vacation. I want money. She would never stop. Of course, I did my best not to spend money so I could save the money. But Reiko, unlike me, had always experienced being poor. Reiko would say, You're not going to make me happy? You're all I've got. I wouldn't be able to tell her no. And this was her chance to be happy. Okay. Really? Thank you. She smiled at me and then dropped this on me. Oh, don't come to the wedding. It's embarrassing that my brother works at a convenience store. It's like you're jobless or something. What? I do work at a convenience store, but I've worked hard to make sure you and mom can have a good life. And we're family. Mom would want to see you on your wedding day. Nope, I'm going to hire a rental family, so that's enough. A rental? Also, don't tell mom about the wedding. I don't want her to get sick or something. That's all. Bye. I was so shocked by what she had just told me that I had nothing to say. As time went on, I started getting angry that she had just insulted my mother. I'll teach you, Reiko. But how? A few days later... What? You're too nice to her! My friend from high school, Sho, couldn't resist and raised his voice at the bookstore. Dude, Sho, keep quiet. Oh, my bad. But that's messed up. You're gonna collapse. He was always worried about me and would give us food and listen to me when I was down. He was my best friend. That day, I met him at the bookstore again and he saw me when I looked down. I had explained everything that had happened between me and my sister. I didn't expect him to raise his voice like that, but he raised his voice again when it seemed like he figured something out. I've got it! I forgot because of your story about how dumb your sister is. But there's something I wanted to tell you. And let's teach your sister a lesson while we're at it. Something you wanted to tell me? Actually, one year later, the day of the wedding. Reiko was in an all-white wedding dress and the wedding was held in an expensive hotel. A garden wedding, they call it. 
Next to her was her groom and relatives. Also, the rental family. It was a great time and she thought this would end in happily. But I was watching from the car. Take me over there, I quietly told the driver. Huh? What is that limo? Part of the wedding? The patrons were all watching and I got out of the car. Brother? Brother? Huh? I saw Reiko panicking and I walked right past the invited guest side and straight to a panicking Reiko. Congrats on your wedding, Reiko. My friend is actually getting married today, too. He's going to have this wedding at the top floor here. So, how's the fake family going? Rental, was it? I, I don't know him. He's just lying. What are you talking about? I'm your brother. You stole the money from Dad's insurance and used it on all the things to get ready for your wedding, right? The one that worked tirelessly at the convenience store for you? What, what are you saying? Stop lying. Oh, by the way, I figured you'd want a video message for your wedding. I was going to ask our sick and bedridden mother, but since she doesn't know anything about your wedding, I made this instead. I took out a tablet and showed the groom and his family. On the screen was Reiko and I in the living room. Have you put in the money yet? I haven't seen it. Oh, about that. If I give you the remaining money from Dad's insurance, I won't be able to take care of Mom. Can you hang on? I don't care. I need to hurry up and pay for the rental family, so hurry up. If you do that, I don't need you anymore. Miss Rico, what is this? You're literally the worst. It was all a lie? I ignored the furious groom and his family and said this to her face. All right, Rico, have a great life. I don't need you anymore. I walked away quickly. Wait, Kosuke, help me. Do something. I walked away and saw a grinning show nearby. Huh? You don't need to get ready for your wedding? It was my plan, after all. I had to see it through. Joe was the heir to an incredibly wealthy family. The limo was also prepared by him. How was it? You feel a little better? Um, I just hope that she fixes her ways after this. I don't know if that'll ever happen. Whatever. Let's go to your wedding. I want to see some happiness to get over this. Oh, shoot. It's about that time, huh? Afterwards, from what I heard... Reiko's engagement was, of course, called off. They technically already filed the paperwork, so he demanded a divorce. Poor girl. The wedding was also considered canceled, and she had to pay for cancellation fees, along with compensation and damages for the groom. She's apparently working her tail off now. I only know this because my mother chased her out of the house after hearing about this. I'm sure she's learning how to live on her own now. I still work at a convenience store. The owner is going to retire soon, and he's been asking me if I wanted to take over. It's tough, but it works well. Welcome! Oh, hey, Miss Chizuru. This was Sho's friend's younger sister. She's also from an incredibly wealthy family. Hey, Kosuke. My butler usually does all the buying for us, but I just wanted to see you hard at work. Uh, butler? Man, she really is from a rich family. She's bright and bubbly. I'm sure this is her first time being in a convenience store. She was looking at all the snacks in the snack section. I decided to talk to her. Miss Chizuru, would you like to go grab lunch sometime? I'm not sure if you'll like it, but... Of course, I'd love to go. She smiled widely and my heart skipped a beat. I'm happy. Dad, you just watch over me, okay? My name is Rina Sato. I'm just an ordinary housewife. I live with my husband and my son. We've been living comfortably at the apartment we moved into a few years ago. Everybody's nice. Nobody talks badly about each other and we all maintain a well-balanced relationship. Thanks to that, there hasn't been any trouble so far. However, recently, some families with children have moved into the newly built condominium across the street. One of the mothers, Miss Hino, is known for being a chatterbox who spreads rumors about everyone. Have you heard about Sayori? She's in our kids' class. She was absent from school with the flu. I'm so disgusted. What if our kids get it from her? Oh, well, it's not her fault. We should be understanding. Well, we're planning to go on a trip to Okinawa next week. If anybody gets sick, we'll have to cancel it. Uh, I see. Do you know how it costs money to cancel a trip? You wouldn't since you're just an ordinary family. You probably don't have enough money to go on trips. Oh my, I'm so sorry. Was I being rude? My bad. 
However, when I checked with another mother, I found out that Sori had been absent because she was attending her great-grandfather's funeral. Mrs. Hina always spread unreliable rumors like this. On top of that, she would also brag about being rich, since her husband happened to own a company. I never enjoyed talking to her, but I bump into her often. Our building entrances face each other, so it's pretty hard to ignore her when I see her. Plus, all the mothers come down to the building entrance to say bye to our kids in the morning, so seeing her every morning was inevitable. I bumped into Miss Hino again. Gosh, she is so rude and annoying. Why does she enjoy backstabbing everyone? You know, the other day she was telling everybody how Mrs. Tanaka's husband got fired. That's low. You shouldn't talk about private matters without the person's consent. Plus, she wanted to detail about the husband was fired for groping somebody on the train. Everybody knows Mr. Tanaka would never do anything like that. I know, right? Nothing she says is ever true. Why would she make up lies about such things? We should keep our mouth shut in front of her so she doesn't get any silly ideas from us. Most of us thought this way. We all avoided Miss Hino as much as we could, so we wouldn't cause any unnecessary drama. Mrs. Hino didn't seem to notice us trying to avoid her. She would always come right up to us to grab our arms so we wouldn't run away. I saw Mrs. Hayashi at the shopping mall the other day. She was acting all suspicious, looking around at everybody. I know how poor her family is. I bet she was trying to find the right moment to shoplift some things. Oh, um, I'm a bit in a hurry. Is that so? Okay. Oh, I almost forgot. Did you know Mrs. Shimada's mother-in-law has cancer? I heard Mrs. Shimada didn't want to spend her money on hospital bills. They sent the mother to a cheap hospital far away. She's an evil daughter-in-law. Couldn't understand how Mrs. Hino could just go on and on. Did she not realize how everyone hated her? I wasn't the only one sick of her. The reason why Mrs. Hayashi was looking around at the shopping mall was to keep an eye out for her younger child. Mrs. Shimada's mother-in-law was admitted to a hospital far away because it gave the best treatment for her cancer. You shouldn't spread false rumors. Some of the mothers started talking back to Mrs. Hino because they thought she went too far. But it only angered Mrs. Hino. She called us boring before turning around and stopping off to who knows where. However, this wasn't the end of everything. Mrs. Hino started targeting some of the quiet moms. She could tell some were timider than the others. One morning, I saw Mrs. Hino chomping down on Miss Yamakawa. No, please. That's not me, I swear. But it looks just like you. Come on, just a minute. Hey, what are you doing? Mrs. Yamakawa, are you okay? Did Mrs. Hino say something to you? This is an ad for a hostess bar. The number one hostess looks exactly like Mrs. Yamakawa. So I asked her if she does hostessing at nightclubs. I would have never expected this from Mrs. Yamakawa. Never judge a book by its cover, huh? I'm telling you, it's not me! Please stop saying it is! I could see Mrs. Yamakawa was about to break down and cry. Mrs. Hino, that's enough! Her eyes may look a little similar, but I don't see much of a resemblance. That's right! You need to understand how you hurt people with your thoughtless chattering! Mrs. Yamakawa, let's just go. Don't let her bother you. Okay. Hey! Don't act like I'm the bad guy! I was only asking because I was curious! Jeez! After this incident, Mrs. Hino labeled me as her enemy. She started insulting me everywhere. Whether it was at the park or the supermarket, she would come over just to make rude comments. But there was someone worse than Mrs. Hino. Oh my gosh, Mrs. Sato! There you are! My gosh, why are you dressed like that? You need to dress according to the occasion, dear! Yes, I'm aware that's why I dress like this. It's sports day today. You can't wear cheap clothes like that. Your child will get bullied for it. What if all the other kids start calling you shabby and dirty? I don't care. It's sports day, so we might end up getting dirty. Even if we might get dirty, it's never okay to dress like that. Look at me. Look at my clothes. My husband bought this for me. Just for today. Ha <laughs> Oh, I see. Well, that's good for you. 
Hey, you're not looking close enough. Everything I'm wearing is from high brand stores. They're expensive. She just wouldn't let it go. I replied with a yeah, whatever when... Hey, sweetie, that's enough. Mrs. Hino's husband suddenly appeared. I was relieved to see he had proper common sense until... Hmm, what's the point of talking about high-end clothing brands with commoners? Let's get going. Talking to the poor is never good for us. I guess so. I'm sorry for wasting time, honey. What? They turned out to be a match made in heaven. And I was so sick of them. Mrs. Hino never gave up trying to mess with me. However, I worked from home. So there wasn't much about me to pick on or spread rumors about. On top of that, I asked my husband to take the kids out in the morning. So she never got the chance to hassle me. I was hoping Mrs. Hino would find something else to spend her time and energy on. But I soon found out that. You know, this gaudy lady always stares at me from the building across the street every morning. She even followed me to the station today. What? I can't believe she did that to you. Yeah, it was pretty obvious. I made sure I lost her before getting on the train. My husband described the woman, and I knew it was Mrs. Hino. I told him I was going to complain to her, but he told me to calm down and that I should wait a little bit more before causing a huge scene since we were neighbors. I decided to let my husband handle things on his own. It bothered me to think Mrs. Hino would go that far, just to find something to annoy me about. But Mrs. Hino soon finds out the true danger of sticking her nose into other people's business. One day, I was working from home as always. My phone rang, and I looked at the screen to see Mrs. Hino's name on display. Hello? Can I help you? I saw him! Your husband is cheating on you! I bet you would feel so uncomfortable living here if everyone found out about this! Took a moment to understand what Mrs. Hino was saying since she was talking so fast. However, as soon as I realized what she was talking about, I turned pale. Mrs. Hino! You need to run! Get out of there! What? What are you talking about? Oh, you've gone crazy hearing about your husband cheating on you! No, that's not it! You were at the hotel behind the station, right? My husband is there because of work! Work? No way! He just walked into the hotel with a young girl, hand in hand! He's totally cheating! You don't understand! That woman is a colleague of my husband! He's a detective! Oh my, a detective? <laughs> I can't believe you thought you could fool me with such a lie! I'm not lying to you! He's gone into the hotel to check on his target! He said he'll be making a move after he confirms the target! Get out of there as fast as you can! You could get hurt if you stay there! What could ever happen at a... Oh my gosh! There are so many black cars coming into the parking lot! That's what I've been trying to tell you about! You need to get out of there now! The target my husband was following is the fiancé of a Yakuza group executive! There are Yakuza's in every car that just came in! You don't want to be caught in the middle! It's dangerous! I can't believe this! No! The call was cut off right then, and I couldn't get in touch with her after that. I was worried, but my husband told me when he got home. The fiancé and the guy in the love affair with her were getting beaten up, but there were no others involved. He was smiling when he said that, and I felt relieved. I was just glad Mrs. Hino got out of there before anything happened to her. You know, this case was just so exciting. There were like 10 cars surrounding the hotel. Oh, I wish you were there to see how amazing it was. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I would like that. I'm not the courageous type. I thought things were okay since Mrs. Hino had gone in out safely, but it turns out that nothing was okay. I found out later that the man in the love affair with the fiancé was... What? It was Mrs. Hino's husband? What a coincidence, huh? Mrs. Hino's husband came home after getting beaten up, injured, and bloody all over. Everyone was shocked to see him. And Mrs. Hino even fainted after witnessing the state he was in. My husband told me that Mrs. Hino's husband owned a company but it was all built on his parents' money and reputation. He was incompetent and worthless without his parents and their power. However, he was rich nonetheless, and he used his money 
on hostess bars. He had an affair with a woman he met them. But she turned out to be a Yakuza group's executive fiancé. Oh, so strange how all these seemingly strangers are connected somehow. Well, it's his fault for having an affair in the first place. But how unlucky can he be? The one girl he picked was a Yakuza's fiancé. After that, rumors about Mrs. Hino's family spread all through the neighborhood. Why does my family have to go through such pain? Why? Why? It's your husband's fault for catching my husband cheating. My husband was just doing his job. Your husband is the one at fault for cheating on you. You should know you don't have a bright future with your husband since he's on the Yakuza's blacklist. You should break up with him as soon as possible and run far away. Mrs. Hino enjoyed talking about others, but she didn't seem to like it when she was a target of the neighborhood talk. She couldn't handle it. In the end, she got a divorce and moved out soon after. Hey, stop talking about me, you idiots! It's none of your business! She yelled at us before she left the building. But nobody was sympathetic towards her. I wouldn't expect them to be after everything she did. And so, after Mrs. Hino left the condominium, our lives became peaceful once again. Because of what my husband does for work, I do experience unusual incidents. But in the end, I realize that nothing beats living an ordinary life. My name is Ryoka Koka. I'm 26. I'm a visiting nurse, or what's also known as a home helper. I think it's just coming up to a year since I received my training and started doing call-outs. At first, being a little clumsy, I was constantly confused and flustered. But now I'm used to the job and can work quickly and efficiently on my own. But on the other hand, I do sometimes wonder if I'm not really suited to this job. The reason for that is because I'm an unparalleled meddler. I have a habit of doing things that weren't asked of me without even realizing it. If a house I'm visiting has a dirty window, I can't help but wipe it down. And if any flowers in the flower beds are withered, I want to water them so much I get restless. Hey, Ryoka! We're visiting nurses, not housekeepers! There is such a thing as being too helpful. Please be a little more aware. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Sometimes my coworkers get angry with me. But even still, my hands just start moving before I realize it. I don't see the problem. A little meddling never did anyone any harm. Is there really any need to get that angry? Everyone responds differently. So while there may be some clients who are grateful, there are some who find it annoying and reproach me. Would you stop hovering? I was gonna clean that up later, because it helps me brighten my mood. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Just like that. After troubling over it for a while, Complete the things you're instructed to do to perfection. The only time you'll do things that weren't planned is when you're asked to. I put a lid on my meddling and, as a rule, decided not to do anything unnecessarily. Didn't want to cause my coworkers or our clients any unpleasant feelings. The day after I made my resolution, I made a visit to the Kurita's house. Mr. and Mrs. Kurita live together in the corner of a quiet residential area. They're an elderly couple. And both the husband, Takashi, and his wife, Yuri, are lovely and mild-mannered. Miss Koga, I'm sorry for being such a nuisance all the time. I'd be fine if not for this damn leg. Takashi suffers from a numbness in his legs due to his chronic back pain. Although it causes him no problems in daily life, it's difficult for him to take care of his wife by himself. His wife, Yuri, also has problems with her legs. She suffered a bone fracture. Apparently, she was knocked down from a hit-and-run driver who swerved out from around a bend while she was still out on her daily jog. Takashi's right. I'm sorry for all the trouble we've caused you. Ah, uh, not at all. I'm happy I can be of help to you. Don't hesitate to ask me anything, okay? I visited Mr. and Mrs. Karada's house almost every day on weekends around dinner time. If I had to put it one way or the other, I'd say Takashi is a type who doesn't speak much, and I have a feeling he's set clear boundaries with me. That said, it's not like he was unfriendly or anything, and he was always kind to me and my coworkers. 
Some of our clients were arrogant, but Mr. and Mrs. Karata never failed to show us how grateful they were. So, I found them somehow soothing to be around. Maybe that's why I was able to attend to their needs, all the more conscientiously. Eventually, while I was visiting the Karata household, they got so comfortable with me that they began calling me by my first name. I enjoy gradually getting closer to them like this too. One day, something happened. I was cleaning around the house, just like always, when unusually, the phone rang. Hello? Yes? Yes? Uh, oh. I didn't think anything of it at first, but as the conversation went on, I started to feel that something was wrong with Takashi. I was so curious that without even noticing, I stopped cleaning. Judging from the way Takashi was speaking, the person on the phone seemed to be his son. As far as I could remember, he was living far away for work. You need settlement money? Huh? A whole $40,000? I see. That's a lot. Huh? 40000 in settlement money? I wonder what on earth happened. I quietly continued to watch Takashi through the narrowly open door. Uh, it's a lot of money, but I think I might be able to scrape it together somehow or other. Okay, yes, don't worry. I knew it. it seemed like his son was in big trouble. He'll be sending a lawyer over tomorrow. Got it. I'll be ready and waiting. L lawyer What the? It seems serious. I'm curious, but should I really go sticking my nose in? Don't lose heart. I'm going to help you. But... Could this be that thing I've been hearing rumors about? My urge to meddle, which I had tried to put a lid on, was stirring relentlessly inside me. I opened the door. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Karata? That phone call just now. Did something happen? Oh, you heard that? Apparently my son was caught engaging in misconduct at his company. His son? Misconduct at work? I'm sure I've heard that before. Isn't this a little suspicious? I was so curious that I asked Takashi to tell me more about it. I'm 120% sure that this is a scam. You mustn't do what they say. <laughs> 120%? You must be quite confident. Actually, my aunt fell for a scam just like that. I think they call it relative scam. My aunt on my mother's side was the victim. The poor woman was robbed of most of her retirement savings. And they still haven't caught the culprit. I don't want anything like that happening to you two. Please. <laughs> it's fine. Thanks for worrying about us. Actually... Huh? The next day on the afternoon of the specified date, Mr. and Mrs. Karata's doorbell rang. As instructed by Takashi, I quickly hid in the next room. Thank you for inviting me into your home. My name's Aizawa, and I'm in charge of this case. Not at all. I'm just doing my job. Anyway, do you have the money ready? Before we get onto that, would you mind if I ask you for your lawyer registration number? Ah, I see. Certainly, sir. There are a lot of scams going around at the moment. It's reasonable to be cautious. The man began using his phone. My name is Ryochi Aizawa. My registration number is 41900. As you can see, it's written here on the homepage of the Japanese Lawyers Federation. I immediately looked up the name and number I just heard. It's real. He's actually registered on the Japanese Lawyers Federation site? But this alone doesn't prove anything. As instructed by Takashi beforehand, I made a phone call to a certain number. Yes. Really? I knew it. No, it's fine. Sorry to have troubled you. I quietly showed my face through the gap in the door and gave Takashi the signal. Well then, I'm going to head up and get the money I've prepared now. Would you mind waiting a moment? Certainly. After waiting a few minutes, Takashi returned a leisurely pace, holding a thick brown envelope. Here's the money you requested. Thank you, sir. Allow me to take this. Please get my son out of this mess. Don't worry, sir. Things did look like they may have become serious at one point. But as long as we have this settlement money, there won't be any problems. 
Even still, it's not like people are going to forget about my son's misconduct. I'm worried about what might happen to him after this. To the contrary, it appears we'll be able to quash the issue before it gets out of hand. And your son should be able to continue working normally as before. Really? I'm pleased to hear that. By any chance, does that mean the company president isn't aware of the matter? Um, no, no. He is aware. He's very angry, sir. Oh, is that so? Well, actually, maybe that will put my mind at rest. Takashi, quite uncharacteristically, spoke to the man at length and didn't give him a chance to leave. I think it's about time. By the way, Mr. Aizawa, have you committed crimes before using this same trick? Huh? Crimes? Ah, uh, ha, uh, I, um, I'm not quite sure what you mean. You can cut out the bad acting already. Oh, that's right. There's someone I'd like you to meet. That was my cue. Give it up. When I boldly dashed out from the next room, the man claiming to be a lawyer was so surprised that he almost jumped out of his seat. I got in touch with your law firm, and when I did, I was told that the lawyer known as Mr. Izawa is working on his desk today. Ah, you've really got to done it now! That man's demeanor suddenly changed, and he lunged at me in rage. Ah! That's when it happened. Takashi quickly dashed out in front of me and twisted the man's arm behind his back with a skillful maneuver. That hurts! But please it's gonna break! Time of arrest, 1324. Oops, old habits die hard. It was immediately after that. I could hear sirens outside. The police had come at the perfect time. The police? Could this be? Ah, I gave them a call as I was getting the money ready just now. Damn it! I said let me go, damn it! Good afternoon, sir. Thanks for coming. Thank you for getting in touch with us. We'll take it from here. Turns out Takashi used to be a cop. He revealed that to me after getting the call from the phony lawyer. And that's how we ended up carrying out today's operation. Mr. Karata's strategy succeeded brilliantly. And the man claiming to be a lawyer was promptly dragged away in handcuffs. Thanks for your help. He might just have tricked me if you weren't here, Ryoko. <laughs> it was nothing, really. Wow, it was amazing how quickly you leapt into action at the critical moment. Just like you expect from a former cop. <laughs> Maybe I should go back into the force again. My worry didn't turn out to be completely necessary. But I was at least happy I could help. Maybe my habit of meddling in other people's affair isn't always so bad after all. A few days later, Mr. and Mrs. Karata told me something surprising. What? Really? It turns out the con man who just got caught was a member of the group that scammed my aunt. It's a huge coincidence, I know. But it's official police information, so there's no doubt. When we heard about what happened to your aunt, we asked them to check it just in case. Does this mean my aunt might get her money back? It's possible. We should get a call from the police headquarters any time now. We'll give you a call as soon as we hear from them. Okay. Thank you so much. I was so happy I gave them both a big hug. Um, uh, well, okay. <laughs> After that, all members of the criminal group were arrested, and the full extent of the money they had stolen was revealed. In my aunt's case, it was a bank transfer scam, so she was eligible for relief under Bank Transfer Fraud Relief Act. My aunt called me with delight. Turns out she got every last penny of her money back. If there's something you think you should be doing, you should get involved without thinking of it as meddling. As for me, I'm going to continue with my job in my own way.